This ray box is fairly typical of ones that you'll find in schools. Inside it has a 12 volt filament bulb and there are slots here for putting in slits, filters and so on. And it has similar slots at the side here and to start off with we'll have these ones blanked off with these plates that come with the ray boxes. You'll find that some ray boxes, rather than having these things, have mirrors at the side that can be swung out for certain experiments that we'll talk about later. I'm running my ray box from a 12 volt AC supply here. That's my ray box switched on, but the light that's coming out from it isn't yet suitable for experiments. For one thing, it's diverging or spreading out. What I'm going to do is to try and get parallel light from the ray box. And to do that, I'm going to use this so-called cylindrical lens here. And it fits into the slots in the ray box. If I put it here, that's not what I want either because the rays are now converging or coming together. There should be a position for that lens that's just right for the rays to come out parallel. Some ray boxes don't have different slots for putting the cylindrical lens in. Instead, the cylindrical lens has to go up here and the bulb's mounted on a slider. And it's the distance between this bulb and this cylindrical lens that's important for getting your rays to come out parallel. Note that the kind of ray box I was talking about with the slider is made of metal. The metal parts of ray boxes get hot in use, and that's a health and safety issue for you to consider. Most of the time when we're using ray boxes, we use them with slits to give us either one or three rays. Now here's a set of slits here. There's the one slit for a single ray. There's the three slits for three rays. Now I'll put it in, show you what it's like. There's our single ray. Turning it round, there's our three rays. Three parallel rays. If I wanted three spreading out or diverging rays, then I would simply not use my cylindrical lens. You can see these rays are spreading out now since I've taken the cylindrical lens out. Here are some of the accessories you use with a ray box. Different perspex shapes and some mirrors as well. And what we'll do is we'll look and see what effect they have on the light and how they would be used in physics classes. Notice how I'm using white paper or card to make the rays show up better. Now here's a plane or flat mirror. And one of the things to look at here is to see how the single ray comes in and reflects off at the same angle that it went in at. What physicists say is that the angle of incidence, the angle going in, and the angle of reflection are the same. Here's three rays going into a concave mirror. Now the way I always remember the difference between concave and its opposite convex is to remember that a cave is something that you go into. Look at what the concave mirror has done to the rays. The three parallel rays have all come together to a single point, a so-called point of focus. Now it's no coincidence that satellite dishes have this sort of cross-section. They take weak satellite signals from space and concentrate them to a single point on the receiver part of the dish. This shape is the cross-section of a convex lens. Convex is the opposite of concave, it curves out the way. And like the concave mirror, the convex lens takes parallel rays and brings them together to a point of focus. You'll sometimes hear a concave lens being called a diverging lens, just like you'll hear the convex lens we saw a moment ago called a converging lens. Now this is this concave lens here, caves curve in the way remember, taking the parallel rays and making them spread out or diverge. Here's a single ray of light going into a rectangular perspex block. Now watch what happens when it goes in at an angle. You can see that it changes direction both when it goes into the block and when it comes out again. And in the case of the rectangular block, it comes out parallel to the direction it went in at. This is called refraction when light changes direction and it's the reason why a stick looks bent when you put it into water and why a swimming pool doesn't look as deep as it actually is when you look at it. Notice you also get a wee bit reflection there as well. For my next experiment I want red light so I'm going to use a red filter and I'm going to place it in the slots in the ray box and then put the slits in. There we are, a ray of red light. And there's the experiment you've just seen, this time using red light instead of white light. If you ask people what this shape is, they'll say it's a prism. 
and they're half right. It's a triangular prism. Actually, all the shapes we've used so far are prisms, but the triangular prism is particularly useful for the next experiment we're going to see. Now look at the red light coming in and the red light coming out, and watch what happens when I remove the red filter. Now we've got white light going in, but let's look carefully at what's coming out. You can see that the light coming out has been split up into colours. We have all the colours of the rainbow, or to give it its proper name, we've formed a visible spectrum. Now why don't you get a visible spectrum with red light? Well it's because red's a pure colour, whereas white light's a mixture of colours. That's one of the most important, not to say beautiful, experiments in physics. Here we've got a single ray of light going into a semicircular prism. Now it's arranged so that it's striking the midpoint of the flat surface of the prism. Now look at what you're getting here. You're getting some light reflected and you're getting some light transmitted or coming out again. But if I change the angle that the light hits, I get to the point where no light comes back out. I get only a reflection. And this is called total internal reflection. And that's quite an important setup, something that children will see in science when they do telecommunications and when they do higher physics. What I'm doing here is using the ray box to do some colour mixing. Now, to be honest, this is better done with three individual ray boxes. In this one, I've put a red filter in here and a green filter in here. And what I'm going to do is to use a mirror to shine the light from the green filter so that it overlaps over here with the light from the red filter. Now there's the area of overlap in here and you can see that what I've done is I've colour mixed red and green to make yellow. Now that might surprise you because you may have been used to colour mixing with paints when you'll get a completely different result. This is a kind of colour mixing called additive colour mixing that happens when you combine light. It's not the same as mixing paint in the art class. This is a little colour mixer here that has red, green and blue LEDs in it. And I can add them together. There's red and green making yellow. There's all three together making white. Modern LEDs are good light sources to use in school optics experiments. Here's an ultra bright LED source that you can use along with slits and lenses as a substitute for a ray box. Here's a laser ray box which has the advantage that you don't need a blackout in the classroom to be able to clearly see what's going on. Now if you're thinking that there are health and safety implications here then have a look at the health and safety and physics notes that are issued with this course.